All right, so now I've got most of the, the textures almost ready to cut it out, but a few little things. That alligator tail just doesn't look customized enough to me yet, and I've lost my back leg. So little things you can do, not bringing a new reference necessarily, but moving your old reference, <laughs> making better use of it, because this just looks kind of silly proportionally. He doesn't have enough uh, waist. So I'm going to move this leg, and I'm going to get a lot of overlap. Again, this is just making more, more assets out of reference you already have. So I'm going to steal that. I want to make sure I'm on that layer. There we go. Duplicate it. Move that leg up above and then move it where I think using my sketch will fit the anatomy best. And then never be afraid like the cartoon project, cartoon jumble, to distort towards your own vision. So where are the hips? The hips are near the closer to the base of the tail. So warping can sometimes be dangerous when you're dealing with whole uh, anatomical systems because it will make them look like macaroni. You want to keep the straight straight and the joints angled. But using distort and skew, you can kind of line up the perspective, get the angle right. There we go. That's looking good. It's working with the anatomy. And then I can go in and start erasing out first taking out all the hard edges with this soft edged eraser. Usually I would move it to 100% opacity, but I'm just trying to keep it a little faster and just keep it moving by hitting it multiple times around those ridges. And letting these ridges kind of take over from the pine cone. And just by using this kind of 50% opacity, I'm already kind of blending these things together. And I can even use the shadow that's already there from the reference. Okay, then seaming this bottom, I have to kind of find a new bottom line and then softly transition these scales into the scales given. Like so. So we really are kind of making our own creature. Okay, and then the last, last and final touch, I want something on the tail here. It doesn't make it so recognizable as just a, a crocodile. So we have maybe a little spot of color. I have these different dragon fruits. And this was the, uh, there's two things I'm kind of choosing from. One is this. I think that's really cool as a different color. That could be really interesting. But then this is the, maybe the, the most similar to other textures I'm using, but very different. And it's something I haven't seen in the store type of dragon fruit perhaps. I'm going to flip it vertically here so I get the lighting on top. Matches the tail a little bit. And again it's on a white background which is so lovely for this kind of use. Now it's not a perfect white background, it's just done on a tile floor. But very easy to just use contiguous and the magic wand and select around and then select the inverse and duplicate. Now the problem is there is little debris that got left around it. If I want to find that I can use the magic wand and see. So there's a little piece of debris there. So I'm just going to really quickly use my lasso and delete that. Because otherwise that will float wherever I use this. Now I can 
scale it, rotate it, distort it, kind of make it my own to fit with my design. And I think I want to use more of the top than the bottom. And if I do that, maybe I can flip it vertically again. Yeah. And then kind of cut out around this bottom. Because I do want it kind of dragging on the floor. But I like how it echoes some of the shapes in the pine cone features I'm using other places. Then use that eraser, get rid of some of these hard edges, start transitioning in. See how that starts to transition the color even, but I'll do more, more of that later. And then let's see, I don't think I want this. All right, so now I've got all these different components from different parts of the assembly line. It's a good time to save it. Now I need to start um, cutting it all out. And this is tricky. And what helps is before I do that, it's good to play with the levels and the color of each element and make sure I've got everything covered that I need. So I'm looking around the edge and seeing where I can cut things out. And I'm seeing that I've got this texture here, which I need to make sure that this overlap has content. So I'll find that layer. Yep, I've got stuff there. I want to get rid of a lot of this. So I'm in the clear. And then I need to work on the back side of this leg to overlap. So I'm working on internal edges first. Hold down Command to get to the Move tool, then go to my eraser. This is maybe a good example of where I can use contiguous on the clone stamp. All right, kind of cut that out and then use the soft edged eraser, especially because it's a fur texture. Make sure I've got the content behind it. Yep, so that cutout will work. Okay, so I've got some obvious places where the colors and the lighting are different. Um, I'm going to do a rough cutout on the back here, just so I can see that on the gray a little bit more clearly. So I can cut out all of that. And I've got this spike here. I say it's rough because I'll be going back over it again and making sure. And I'm going to err on the side of too much left in. But what's nice about organic textures is you can kind of define where they are. And again, better to use just your tablet and the lasso for a nice clean cut which you can do in sections like this, instead of trying to use the magic wand. Okay, so I might be able to use that overlap. Really rough cut out of that. Get rid of this hand, I don't need that anymore. Maybe recut out the neckline here. There we go. Okay, yeah, so lots to work with. Okay, so now let's work with the colors, just like I did when I did the head. I'm going to start with the ears. 
and I'm going to show you how we can let's see if it will let us. If we hold down command and we find the different layers. Where's that other ear? Okay, here we go. Hold down command, then we can select both layers. And it will let us adjust them in terms of their position. We can distort them a little bit together. But it will not let us. There we go. It won't let us um, color adjust them. So we have to do it separately. But what I could also do is I could merge them. So I take these two, hold down Command. So it's both of those layers combined again. And then I can go to Layer, Merge Layers. And I'll put them on the same layer. Right, which can be helpful for adjustments. First, levels want to deepen their midtones, dull their highlights, and then go to color balance and take out a lot of that warmth. Without going too far, right? I don't want to get into the edges, I don't want to make them. Um, totally different colors. I still want that full spectrum in there. And then the highlight, I'm going to push them a little bit towards the warm, and the shadows a little bit towards the blue. Did that make a difference? Yes, helps. Okay, this section here, levels, to make it quite a bit darker, I think, especially because it's in shadow. Limit the highlights. Now I want to play with the color balance. Just a little more green, a little bit more cyan, a little bit more blue. Doesn't stand out so much. Then I might go back to levels and actually bump the highlights a little bit, just so that texture really shows up, and maybe even deepen the shadows. We're getting into some pretty dark shadows back there, but that's in full light. Okay, now this back section. If you're worried about making these changes, you can always make a duplicate and do the changes to the duplicate. So I want some pretty bright highlights here because we're getting into this back. About like that, a subtle difference then color balance should make a big difference here. Yeah. There it is. Not that it can't have a different local color, but it should feel like it's in the same temperature of lighting as the rest. So even if it was kind of red and yellow on his back, um, it's still lit by the same kind of grayer, more even light, not a yellow fluorescent light. And then this one, which didn't have a whole lot of color, remember I had to add color in. Go to hue saturation. We can bump up what color there is. Maybe deepen the whole thing a little bit. Trying to find a color that works. What's problematic is that you have those deep shadows where there's no pixels to play with. There we go. So then I want to play with color balance. I want to bring some red into the highlights. A little bit of yellow and then into the shadows I want to bring the opposite. Some cyan and some blue. Yeah, it's going to give it a little bit more depth all the way around. It's going to help underneath. Now, this crocodile tile, I haven't messed with these levels at all. You can definitely punch that up a little bit. Push the highlights. And then for the and then the color balance. There's so many elements. 
So these are the final adjustments to levels and color balance.